What is your name? My name is Will. Will. Will? Yes. I have no idea what I'm going to say. But when I thought about coming up here, I felt my heartbeat rise. So that told me I needed to get up here. You're speaking out of sadhana of having to come into your body and to integrate into the physical. And uh, after I found out who I am, there was a very good question as to whether my person would survive. And I can say that fortunately, he did not. So now, I don't really have a person now. And uh, it's great. And um, as far as the question goes, there's not much question. So now that that person, the ego mind self, came to a close and has been left to go down the stream. The only personhood that I have any inspiration to associate with integrally is humanity itself. But it also seems that I may also be in a position where I'm not a specific soul at this time. And the awakening for me was that I am, in true essence, the world soul. And perhaps we all are. And it's just shedding all the layers off the top that come to bring that realization. So that journey back to Earth was interesting. I know everybody asks questions, but for me it's more like an exploration of There is, there's not even exploration. It's just I'm excited to be in this life and I'm happy to be in your presence. So I have a, I have a question. <laughs> so my question is that the framework of this satsang is a prashnotar satsang, right? Mm -hmm. Prashnotar meaning question and answer. Yes. So that's the framework we are given. Just like when there's a road, you know, it's something we can walk on or cycle on, but we can't sail on it because it's not water, it's a road. So in that sense, the framework here is a prashnotar framework. Mm -hmm. So, and don't, you know, don't be upset with what I'm saying, I'm just trying hoping, to, I'm flowing with you in this. I was hoping a question would arise. <laughs> exactly. So the thing is that when we are in a framework which has a specific let's say, a given, which is prashnotar, question and answer, then the discipline of that framework is to come and sit here and ask a question, because that's the framework. So let's see if you can formulate a question. What I'm trying to do is to bring you into the... I, I, I would be glad because I was hoping a question would arise. And um, I think you can work. very easily formulate one. It doesn't matter what it is. The when point is, is to a, keep the to keep the discipline of the satsang. Absolutely. Okay. When there is no past and there's no future, there's no ego self. What would be your advice moving forward to give the greatest opportunity to allow my energetic body to expand freely to the greatest benefit to the greatest amount of people. There is a, a sort of a, 
a movement out of your system towards serving, serving everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And that possibility to serve everyone will be given to you by life when you move into a state of surrender to a soul which you might have to conjure up for the moment. You understand? This system has to concretely experience surrender and when it experiences surrender to... let's call it the soul. You can shape it like a heart if you want. When you... when you move into a state of surrender to this heart-shaped thing in there, which is your soul, then that serving of that will reflect itself in the opportunity to serve outside. Which is what, in your case, is the reintegration. The urge and the wish is there, so obviously there's something within you which wants it and wishes it. It could be the ego, it could be the impulse of the soul, we don't have to think about all that. The point is, does this system know an active surrender? You are actually enlightened and now you're reintegrating. So in the reintegration process, the purpose of life will emerge and it will emerge as you surrender to something. Not I am... not I am that, but I am in surrender to that. That's the next... it's the enlightenment processes are over, now start the self-realization processes which is when the body or this thing which is here will start to do the bidding of the truth, to serve, is what this body wants to do. But it doesn't know how, because it doesn't know surrender. Now, the reintegration starts. Welcome. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of laughing. Crying and reasoning, and it's been pretty cool. <laughs> there won't be any laughing and crying because now there is work to be done. Okay, cool. All right, thank you much. Appreciate it. You can put a dakshina if you want, instead of all those thanks. I said you can put a dakshina instead of all those thanks, or including all those thanks. It'll be a nice reintegration action to undertake. You can say thank you for that as well. <laughs> it's a very it's a very heartfelt suggestion for your well-being. I haven't said it to everybody else. In fact, I haven't said it to anyone. So thank you. Welcome. I wonder if you really Shman Baba, if you really got this thing of reintegration and surrender, you know. As you go into surrender and serving the soul, you'll serve the other. Life will show you exactly where to serve the other because that's your longing. That's what now is to come. No? I thought you were going to take something from me. Aishman Bhava. It's a very, very very interesting state to be in, in that state of depersonalization and then gradually the reintegration and generally what happens is that this urge for service is very strong and it will only find its proper means of expression when the surrender to the soul takes over and the service to the soul starts. It's an amazing process and if you don't believe me, you can try it and see it really does work. Life will give you that field of action in which to serve. And you don't even have to be 
an identity that is serving. It just, this, this is in service, you know, in service, in service, and it's solid. There's no wavering. It just knows, you know, I have to serve, I have to serve, I have to serve. Yes, you first. No. I'll, there are some few in line. Namaskaram. Namaskaram, yes. Well, I mostly came up here. I wanted to thank you. Um, I came to Rishikesh on this occasion because I knew that I was in a position to be integrating basically everything that you're speaking of speaks very directly to me because of the steps I've taken and um, basically merging a universal awareness consciousness into an individual um, body this and um, just wanted to mention the what you said about duality it was the irony was pretty interesting that becoming aware of non-duality and then the physiological effects and after effects of that put me in a state where I was on one side of a duality, being aware of non-duality. It was interesting. And then this merging into the self has been great. And uh, I just wanted to thank you. Um, your impact has been very What's effective. your question? I, my question is, as I return now, my trip is winding down. I found the integration is taking hold very well. And my question is, what advice would you have as a return to my life, my kids, to make sure that this state or this beingness is solidified and it doesn't <coughs> escape me or that I don't fall off the, the horse, I guess. Mm -hmm. So in your particular case, you've been someone who's flown all into space and been one with everything and enlightenment and you've done the, the drill, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for you, integration and actual reintegration is not something that can happen overnight. One can even see it in your eyes, you know. It's a process that will take time because even though you have a very tough body, this, that and all, that doesn't say anything. The reintegration of awareness totally sitting into the very cellular cellularity, let's say, of your system and your body is going to take some time. In order to hold that experience and to also keep it, you would have to, in, in, in your particular case, it would be advisable to keep a connect with this framework because it is here that you have received that impetus to actually reintegrate and to do so in a way that even your conceptual is able to describe precisely. So you would need to actually maintain that connect simply because you're one of those enlightened types, you know. Not everyone has had that misfortune. And I mean that it is a misfortune because it really, really does things to the body which is really not necessarily something everybody needs to endure. So you would need to maintain that connect and the ego has to allow you to do that. And I'm saying the connect with this framework here because it is that one place on the planet where this, this reintegration is being taught, is understood and is solid. So if you maintain your connection here, then there's little chance of you falling off the horse. Hopefully you don't sit on horses, but anyway. Not a good idea for somebody like you to do anyway. But figuratively speaking, so it's your decision. How do you want to maintain your connect over here? And what are you ready to do for it? You can also not maintain it and see what happens and then you know, reappear if you feel that is needed. 
it's up to you. But it's something very precise for somebody like you. There is no embroidery and icing and all, it's, it's the batter. Thank you. Yeah, with me there's no gray areas. It's not safe, actually. Yeah. All right, thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar. I don't know who was after him. Konoto? Hina? Yes, you. Thank you.